Exam review question related to alkyl nomenclature. On the left, we're asked to draw the line angle structures of the compounds given below, given the name, and on the right, we're given the structure and we're asked to name the compound. All right, let's get into it. So with a lot of these names, they can be a little overwhelming at first because we have stereochemistry involved, we have a lot of different substituents, um, as well as a long carbon chain. So I always advise trial and error and always focus on the longest carbon chain before doing anything. So here we have an octatriene, so we should draw that in first. So if I call this carbon one right here, and this carbon out here, number eight, I should have a double bond between carbon two and three, four and five, and between six and seven. Now let's fill in the substituents. At carbons three, four, and six, we have methyl groups. And now the final step is just to confirm if we have the correct stereochemistry. So between carbons two and three, we have this double bond, and we must ensure that it's 2E. So if we draw in our lowest priority groups, we can use SIP rules just like we did with RNS. So at carbon 2, I have a methyl and a hydrogen, so of course methyl takes priority. And at carbon 3, I have a methyl group and the continuation of the compound. So this group here, attached to carbon 3, of course will take priority over the methyl. And because the highest priority groups are apart from one another, or trans, we can confirm that 2 is E. And at carbon 4, we do the same thing as we did with carbon 2 and 3, and we assign priority. So at carbon 5, this group here will take priority over the hydrogen. On the other side of the double bond, this group here will take priority over a single methyl group. Finally, we just look at stereochemistry. The 1s seem to be apart, the 2s are apart, so this is a trans configuration at 4 and 5, in other words, E. So, so far, so good. Now at 6, I have Z, so we need to do the same thing as we did with other double bonds. So at carbon 7, the methyl takes priority over the hydrogen. And at carbon 6, this large group here, of course, will take priority over the methyl. But the problem here is that we have a trans configuration. The highest priority group is going downwards here, and the highest priority group on carbon 7 is going upwards. So in order to satisfy 6Z, all I do is bring the methyl group pointing down here, and that should satisfy the stereochem. And there we have it. We have the highest priority groups, the number ones, cis to one another, and the lowest priority groups, cis. So that satisfies 6Z. In B, we have E2-chloro-3-ethyl-2-hexene. We'll draw out hexene before we do anything. From the name, we know the double bond begins at carbon 2, so it must be between 2 and 3. And then we just fill in the substituents. We have a 2-chloro and 3-ethyl, so I can draw those in right here. 2-chloro and 3-ethyl. At carbon 2, the chlorine takes higher priority over the methyl. And at carbon 3, we have an ethyl versus a propyl group, so the propyl takes priority. And in this configuration, it's Z. We're asked to draw E. So we need to switch out any one of these two groups, and it should satisfy the E constraint. So in part C, we have 1-fluoro, 2,4-divinyl, cyclopenta, 1,3-diene. So let's just focus on the parent compound, cyclopentadiene, and draw that out first. And arbitrarily, I can start numbering this way, but I'm forced to start numbering at the pi system. I can't put carbon 1 here because the alkenes take priority over alkanes. Then we can just fill in the substituents. At carbon 1, we have a fluorine. At carbon 2, we have a vinyl group. And the vinyl group looks like that. And at carbon 4, we have another vinyl group. Remember that the vinyl group is an alkene substituent directly bound to carbon chain that's represented by the squiggly line and the final group is the same thing it's a two carbon triply bound substituent that is bound to a carbon chain now the first thing to realize is the prioritization of substituents and functional groups in organic chemistry 
and chem 307 will go all the way up to the alcohol group and we won't venture into ketones and carboxyls until 308 but there is a distinct prioritization that's really required when naming compounds that are polyfunctional so here I observe a halo alkane I have methyl groups all over and we have the OH group the OH group takes highest priority here and after alcohols alkenes come next in priority followed by alkynes alkanes ethers and finally alkyl halides so knowing the prioritization in terms of IUPAC only and not SIP we can determine the numbering scheme of this compound so of course the alcohol takes highest priority when it comes to naming compounds so we need to give it the lowest number the only way to do that is to start from this carbon here and call this carbon 1 so let's make some quick notes about this compound at carbon 2 we have an alcohol group so I'll write 2 ol at carbon 3 we have a methyl at carbon 4 I have an isopropyl group and at carbon 6 I have a chlorine the double bond is between 3 and 4 so I have to include 3 ene at some point so this numbering has to do with the prioritizations of IUPAC only now when we write the name we just alphabetize this so the name should be 6 chloro followed by 4 isopropyl 3 methyl hexene ol and we write in these numbers like so so it's a hexanol with the alkene at 3 and the alcohol at 2. So finally, after all that work, we still need to assign EZ isomerism. So let's analyze carbon 4 first. We have a carbon bound to a carbon, bound to a carbon, bound to a hydrogen. Here, I have a carbon bound to a carbon, bound to another carbon, bound to a chlorine. Now, we need to be really careful and make sure we look at the first point of difference only. So at carbon 4, I have a tertiary carbon because it's bound to three other carbons. At carbon 2, it's secondary. The isopropyl group will take priority over this group here. At carbon 3, it's a little easier. We have a methyl group coming off of carbon 3 and an ethyl group with an OH at 2. So of course, this group will take priority over the methyl. And because the highest priority groups are cis to one another, this is the Z isomer. This compound is a cyclic compound with a double bond. So the first thing to do is to number all the carbons and give the alkene the lowest set of numbers, by default, 1 and 2. And if we just analyze this double bond here, we have the cycle continuing towards the bottom and towards the top and our hydrogens are trans to one another. So this is the E isomer. We have a 3,6 dimethyl. Our parent compound is octene with the double bond by default at carbon 1. And then we just put the name together. So the name would be E 3,6 dimethyl cyclooctoneene. This last example here conveys a very, very important point when naming compounds that are polyfunctional and have triple and double bonds. When we established prioritization here, we said that the alcohol was highest and alkyl halides was lowest. But the more subtle point was that alkynes have lower priority than alkenes. We have two naming scenarios. I can start from the left here and name it this way, or I can start out here towards the right and name right to left. So the blue nomenclature system is the one that's preferred. We have bromines at carbons 2 and 4. We have an ethyl group at carbon 5. And our longest carbon chain has 8 carbons, so it's an oct as the prefix. Now just like we named this compound here with the 3 and then the ene followed by 2 and ol because we had many functional groups, we can do the same thing here with the double and triple bonds. So the double bonds occur at carbons 2 and 4, and it's a diene, but we leave out the last E. The alkyne is at carbon 6, so we can write that in, 6, followed by its suffix, ine, which completes the name. 
Here we can include the E because it's the end of the name. But if we ever include the E or ein in the middle, the E is chopped off. So the entire name without any stereochem, I'm going to attempt to say this, 2,4-dibromo-5-ethyl-octa-2,4-diene-6-ein. So it's an octa -dienine. Wow. Okay. Let's do stereochem, and then we're done. So first, let's look at carbon 5. We have an ethyl group versus a group with a triple bond, so of course the ethyl group is inferior. And at carbon 4, we have a bromine versus a hydrocarbon with a bromine towards the end. So just based on atomic number, bromine takes first priority here. At carbon 3, we draw in the hydrogen, and we assign priority just like we did before. Bromine takes higher priority as opposed to the methyl. And if we go towards the left, it's pretty easy. The hydrogen takes lowest, whereas this large group here, going downwards, takes higher priority. Since the ones are trans, it's E at carbon 2.